Chat. Dun, dun, dun. She's the marathon queen. And I am so excited to be chatting to her. I started athletics with Nolene way back when, and she is still going strong. I cannot wait to chat to this lady, Miss Nolene Conrad. And she's gonna tell us about her life, her education, her motivation, what keeps her going, you know, how she stays, stays focused at her age, especially. A lot of the time, you know, we give up. We're like, no, you're too old, you can't do this anymore. But Nolene is showing us that no matter what age you are, she's gonna make it happen. Let's go live. This is our soundtrack, guys. That's my girl, back your girl. This is how we do it. Good evening, Nolene Conrad. Hey, buddy, how are you? Good and you. How do you like our soundtrack? Just listen. This, this is our back your girl soundtrack. Okay. I want to see some dance moves. That's, you can ask them yourself. Right? I can't dance. <laughs> <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> cool, man. <laughs> Glad to see that Backtrack has got some um, woman power on board. So, um, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. How are you doing, friend? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm keeping warm. I'm a cold and rainy day in Cape Town. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's freezing in Johannesburg as well. I mean, yesterday, yeah. yesterday was a really sunny day, but today it's back to being ice cold. Yeah, no. <laughs> so but luckily, I got to work from home today. So nice and warm. Mm. Just a quick introduction. Good evening to all our guests. Today we're speaking to the marathon queen, Nolene Conrad. Nolene has an amazing bio. I mean, this lady, geez, guys, geez. You just have to read up on her. Not only is she an excellent athlete, but also she has achieved so much off the track. She does steeplechase. She does a 10 kilometers marathon. She does 5,000 meters and 3,000 meters steeplechase. So she is a woman of wonders. She has amazing achievements. And we're going to find out when did your athletic career start? Where did the passion start, Nolene? Okay, first, good evening, everyone, all the viewers. Welcome and thank you for joining us um, this evening. Um, yeah, my athletics um, started at the age of 16 years old. You know, it, uh, my story has been going around, I think, the last few years now. Um, where I just came up and I shared my journey on how I started running. It was actually because I was suffering from chronic asthma that I started running. So like a blessing in disguise for me, actually. Um, and then I started with um, cross country at school. So that was the foundation for me. Um, yeah, like as I mentioned, um, asthma led me to running. I had a fatal, um, near fatal asthma attack, which landed me in the hospital for the week. And, and the doctor told me to try out running. Um, and, and that's where it all started for me. I mean, that changed your life because look, yeah. how many years later you are running on a national and an international level. You have represented South Africa, what, over 29 times in all three events you know, in various competitions. Tell us, what has been your favorite competition or championship that you raced at? Sure, it's hard. It's, that's a hard one because um, I think the one competition that where I actually made my name was the steeplechase, um, where I ran steeplechase against the Bojo one year and I was like a complete unknown. No one knew me. I was this skinny girl from Western Cape and, you know, no one even put me in the... <laughs> medal and then on that day I ran um I dipped on, on on the line to run a national record and I I won the race so so now that one was defeating the odds obviously so that race was a big race for me after that everyone knew Nolan Conrad was and yeah that that would be a big moment for me and then that led me to Commonwealth Games um the next year which was my first big international team and I mean as a as a junior I've never made an SA team but um, I went to Commonwealth Games as a 20-year-old, and that was my senior team to such a big um, meet. And that was obviously incredible because, I mean, we were in a... I went yeah, that's where I met Geraldine um, Pillay, 
And she was actually, I looked up to her um, once I started running and I saw you had a talk with Geraldine last week. Um, so she was a huge inspiration yeah. for me. And when I got to the game, she was almost like my mother. Vest. Like she was just took me under her wing and took care of me. So, so it was an amazing experience. I mean, that's the best. Like when you run in a packed stadium and you just have people screaming and shouting for you. We don't always yeah. experience that in South Africa. I mean, we have had one or two times at national champs where we have packed stadiums. And all of a sudden when you go to Europe, everyone knows your name. Everyone yeah. knows what you race and your PBs and your SBs. And you're like, how do you know me? I'm just from South Africa. Yeah. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> no, it's crazy. And that's something we want to see in South Africa. We want people to get excited about athletics. We want to fill the stadiums. And I mean, that's something we are striving towards, um, but we haven't seen that in years. So yeah, no. it's time to get that back, man. <laughs> 100%. Just a shout out to Sharice Jones. Yay, Sharice. Sharice. Hey, Jean Payne, Lawrence, um, just a few names to mention. Everybody that's watching, guys, we are chatting to Nolan Conrad, seven time national champion. Have you guys even been national champion? She's been national champion seven <laughs> times. So if you have any questions for Nolan, please. Don't be afraid to ask us. <laughs> so Nolan, obviously you've been in the track life and track world for a very long time. I mean, you started when you were 16, you represented South Africa numerous times. How do you think things have changed or times have changed, you know, from way back then to what they are now? So you make me sound so old, eh? I'm not you old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. Okay, I've been around for long, but I'm not old, eh? You're so um, like I am I'm very young. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. It <laughs> gets better with age. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I would say um, I learned that the fundamentals is really important. So like cross country and track and field was really important for my development. And I'm so happy that I stayed on it for that long. Um, like now I've moved into the road running at the age of like 27, 28 we, we are really focused on road running. And, and I mean, now we see juniors starting to run road races very earlier on. Yeah. They're leaving the cross country. They're leaving the track. And I mean, yes, it is maybe because we don't have any money on the track, but still that is where the development takes place. So, so we need to encourage our younger athletes to stay on the road, uh, stay on the track and stay on the cross country races. And I think that's one good thing that came out of COVID is with the road ra races being cancelled now, we see, uh, we still see the cross country sometimes going, continuing, and then the track races also still taking place. And our, and our juniors could see that once they start focusing on that only, then they can start doing well. I mean, they can yeah. run four times on the track if they just stick to that. Um, and, and we need to encourage that going forward because that is an important um, aspect of their development. Once they start going to the roads and running 21 Ks and marathons wow. early on, then we lose, we lose our talent. Yeah. So it's fair to say that track obviously helped create and cultivate your road and marathon journey, right? Because I know you were on the track doing the 3,000, the 5,000, sometimes 1,500. Mm. I don't know if you're able to do any 400 meters in it. <laughs> but I mean, it obviously helped develop your, your marathon um, career right now. Yeah, most definitely. I think um, while I was at university, when I was at UJ, I was competing in everything just to get points. You know, you saw you, I do the 5,000 and I do the 30,000 staple, staple chase. And on the last day, we were asked to do the relay where I actually ran the 400 meters and I said, never again. <laughs> so, so um, I, I pride myself on being a versatile athlete. Because I feel like, you know, you can't just stick on one distance. If you want to specialize in 5,000, you need to be able to run a 1.5. You need to be able to run a 10,000. Um, and that's all just part of the development. Yeah, no, definitely. And I mean, obviously you said it's helped you and it's, it's, it's cultivated you and it's prepared you for the marathon. But what is your favorite event? Is it a flat? Sure. Is it a steeplechase? Is it the marathon? What do you enjoy most? Well, if you'd asked me this question 10, 12 years back, I'd have said, I would have said 5,000 meters. I, I, I don't think that I was, um, I think steeplechase was my strongest event where mm. I could do well 
globally. But the 5,000 I enjoyed more because there were no barriers. I didn't like the barriers. I was sometimes very scared of the barriers and I had to overcome that fear. But that is when you, when you hurt yourself, you, you, are, you are fearful. So I fell over the barrier once and I was very fearful. But it was my strongest event. So I continued on with it. And then the 5,000, I enjoyed a lot. Like I always loved getting into a 5,000 meter. And now my favorite event is 21Ks. But I don't do it enough because the marathon has become this big event worldwide. It's everyone's making a marathon and they, that's where the potential is. But I, you know, I run, I race better or my times are better over the half marathon. And I haven't really competed enough on, on that event globally. So that is what I want to do for the future. I want to focus more on my half marathons. Crazy. I don't understand how you do it. Like, I run at 200 meters and I'm pumped. How do you keep going for like 21K, <laughs> half marathons? All of, I don't understand how you guys do it. And you're training. Sometimes you guys can go like 100 kilometers a week. Like, how do you keep your body, you know, fit and healthy? And how do you um, deal with all of that force and hard pounding on your body and on your joints? I know you've obviously had a lot of injuries that you had to deal with and, and challenges that you had to face. But how do you keep going? So... I, I'm lucky that I've had like a conservative coach and that we, we've come to understand my body and how it functions. So that's one very important lesson and something that I as a coach also carry over to my athletes is to say, you have to know your body. You have to know that when you're feeling tired on a specific day, so I'll say it's Sunday today and I have to do a 24K long run and my body's just feeling pop and tired. You know, am I going to force myself to go and run that? Or am I going to say, Nolene, just pull back and just give it a rest day, you know? So it's all about knowing your body um, and then and then going from there. But I, I do think that the training for, for these events is insane. It is hard and you need to be committed and you need to be smart about it. You know, the a mileage for me is not a big thing anymore. I've seen that I can come away with, you know, getting the results I need with low mileage. Um, I always thought that mileage was if you do more mileage, you can get better, you know, but it's not like that. And some people still think like that. You can actually, you can actually get away with low mileage is actually better for in terms of injury risk and all of that. But it is just trying to take care of yourself and getting a good balance because uh, my mentor always told me that my strength is always my is also my weakness, which means yeah. I'm so motivated and I, I, I'm so hungry to achieve things that I go overboard sometimes. And it's just that fine line between where do you stop? Where do you say, okay, this is it. This is where I pull back. Yeah. I mean, you, you made reference to something very important. Know your body and know what works for you as an athlete. I think... People don't understand how important this is. I mean, I was in one session one day and I said to my coach, I, my body just is not in the mood to train. And my coach said to me, Alyssa, go train, go run. Mm -hmm. And immediately mm -hmm. in my first rep, I pulled my hamstring. Um, and, you know, so how do you as an athlete, you know, number one, stand up to your coach and tell your coach, look, I'm not going to do this. And how do you teach or how do you get to know your body earlier? Because a lot of us only learn about our body now 25 up and then it's too late because your career is done. You know, you've had all of these injuries. So what can we do as young athletes to learn about our body and know exactly when to push and when not to push without only listening to our coach? Yeah, I think one, firstly, on the coach thing, you and your coach have to have a good understanding. That's the most important thing. I think um, once you become afraid of your coach and you don't want to tell him things like I've seen it before, we co coaches are so authoritative that they don't want to listen to you, that they tell you, okay, you just have to do that and, and, and um, be done with it. But if you have a good understanding with your coach, then, you know, you, you learn to get through those things um, and it becomes easier for you to build that relationship and talk to your coach when you're not feeling good, when you are feeling a bit niggly and you don't want to force yourself to go and train and that prevents injury at the end of the day. And the yes. other thing is there are certain tools to deal with, um, to, to learn to get to know your body. Firstly, I, I always take my pulse rate in the morning and then I know if it's, if it's eight or 10 beats over, I know I'm get, either getting sick or um, I'm fatigued. So that is one way how I manage. That's a tool that I manage to get to know my body. And also you get to know your body through injury. It, it's an experience. So you learn through, through your injuries um, when to, you know, draw the line and say, okay, 
I'm feeling a niggle today, but sometimes you run past that and you say, ah, you know, it, it, it's going to disappear tomorrow or I'll just give it a massage today. But once it starts getting worse and worse, then you know, okay, I need to stop and I need to, you know, uh, take some time off. And my coach always said to me, um, three, four days of rest is better than three, four months of, of rest. So you have to be smart. Uh, that's, that's definitely true. I mean, also, yo, how do we, or how do you think things have changed for female athletes? You know, obviously you in your prime still and things are going great and you have sponsors and, and life is good. But how has it changed from us having to really battle to get sponsors to sponsors just being readily available now? Do you think women is getting more opportunities? Do you think we're still fighting against men for opportunities, especially in track and field? I think in track and field, it's difficult to say now. They, I think the, they are, there are little opportunities for women on track and field. When you look at the club aspect, especially like how do you, where do you get a club for a track and field athlete? I mean, it's very difficult to get a club. For us um, road runners, it's, it's easier. That's why I say more athletes are prone to go to the roads because they know the sponsors are there. Um, there's TV time, all of that. So the sponsors tend to go more with athletes that are, have exposure on the road. Um, yeah. Um, Karen, like I know that on, on the track, it's very, very difficult as a female athlete to get a, a personal sponsor, but on the road, it is a bit easier. Um, and I think you need to also, uh, finding a sponsor is very like, it, it's tough. And I struggled for years, you know, for years I had to, you know, prove myself and I had to work to get to that sponsor. I mean, I was at the at UJ and I was, you know, getting things freebies from my friends and wanting to get a sponsor. And I think I only got a sponsor at age um, 26 years old or 27 years old. And I was running well from 20 onwards. I mean, I told you I'd made Commonwealth Games then, and, but I only actually got my first sponsor at 26. So I think yeah. that um, one really, when it comes to sponsorship, you really need to be patient firstly. Um, and, and nowadays things have changed so much that you have to have a social media pre um, presence to have a sponsor. Also because brands now what they do is they go and look at your social media. They go and look at what you post, what yeah. your, what, how many followers you have. And I know that's like you think they only go with performance, but it, it's not like that anymore because you look at what happened in COVID time. Athletes were not able to compete now. So yeah. what do sponsors do? They draw back on that social media exposure. They ask athletes to kind of give them that exposure through social media media mm -hmm. and yeah that that's changed a lot now in the last time so that's something athletes must really take seriously and build their brand start start having a presence on social media because and i'm not saying you have to post every day and you have to post everything that comes your way but be sensible and also be loyal when you look at sponsors. You can't want to have an Adidas sponsor and then wear Nike and post it all over your, your social media. It doesn't wow. work like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it's just the understanding of what sponsors need at the moment mm -hmm. and how you, can, how you can bring your part and contribute towards that. So, yeah. And I think also a lot of people just see your social media and be like, oh my gosh, the link just got an Addy package or Nolene just got this package and that package but they don't understand how hard you have to work for it and how long it takes look you said yeah. that you ran commonwealth in early 20s and you only got a professional sponsorship when you were 26 27 so it takes years to actually get to that point where sponsors start noticing you it takes hard performances it takes consistently good performances and i don't think athletes understand that so just take us through a day or you know, one of the hard days of Nolene's training sessions and what you have to do. Because we all know that you also work a full-time job on the side. So take us through yeah. how you actually manage all of this. So, so I think one of my hardest days are probably when I'm preparing for marathon. So when I'm in marathon, marathon prep, I'm very lucky with my job to have flexibility. Whereas, you know, if, if I need to, at the moment, it's, it's a bit different because you kind of work from home at times. But if I were to go back like two years ago where I was preparing for a marathon, then um, I would probably train early in the morning. I would train about six o'clock do my morning runs from six to seven um, about there and then go back. I would, I would be based in Stellenbosch. So then I would go back to um, Stellenbosch Academy of Sport where I work and I would uh, go shower there, get ready for work, go straight to work, um, work until 
And then from there on, you know, <laughs> I'd want to, obviously, I love my naps between the time and I obviously get very tired. So sometimes I would rest up in the office until that time or something, but um, I would go sleep at a friend's place and then I would go straight to training from there um, because I live in Somerset. So it's, it's a bit difficult to drive from Stellenbosch to Somerset and back for training. So yeah. I, I work and train in Stellenbosch. So then I go straight from work to, to training and then after training, go home, which is already like um, I would get home at half past six and then I'd have to still cook dinner mm-hmm. and yeah, get ready for bed. And yeah, so, so that's a typical. So I'll probably be in bed like by nine o'clock um, to rest and, and prepare for the next morning. So it's an early evening go to bed, so you'll be up early in the next morning, so you recover well. So marathon training is hard. That's why I prefer when I do my marathon block that I go on a training camp mm. because the, the environment is better for me. I can be more relaxed, um, and I still do work, but not as intense. Yeah. I know I can, I can vouch for your naps. Because when I, when I put rugby and I was living in Stellenbosch, and Aline called me, Lisa, can I quickly come and nap on your bed? I'm really tired. <laughs> and she came through. She napped for like 20 to 30 minutes, got up and went on with her day. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this guy. But how important is nutrition to you? You mentioned that you have to still go home and cook and prepare. How important is nutrition to you in order to achieve your goals? So, so nutrition is impu- important because uh, you need that fueling for your performance. You know, you can't run on empty. You have to get the right nutrients firstly, so you can fuel your body to be able to perform. So that's a, a vital aspect of, of running. And I think once, like for anything that you're training for, if it's a tinker, if it's track running, anything, you have to eat the right yeah. food. Um, I'm not very specific on diet, so I don't, you know, plan out like I need to eat a bit of this and that and that. Um, I need to just get in the right food. So like I know that I need to get in my fruits, two fruits a day at least, and I need to drink at least um, one to two liters of water a day. And I I need to get my vegetables in with my um, protein and my carbs in the evening. So I'm I'm very like cautious or or how can I say, I I know what I need to eat. going forward so nutrition is very important for me even like the recovery supplements i watch what i put into my body because we get tested a lot (laughs) so we need to be very um we need to be very sure of what we put into our bodies and even if we buy supplements out over the counter we need to check the medicine every time because you never know something even with supplements it might be contaminated so i always also keep a sample if i use any any supplements so at the moment, like I'm using Herbalife, so then I'll keep the um, uh, 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 um, a bit of the supplement and use that as if, if anything was to come out, then I at least have some some proof. But you need to be um, very uh, cautious when, when it comes yeah. to that. Hmm. I mean, just listening to you now, I'm like, that's a lot of work. Imagine like having to keep a bit of every single or one pill of every container that you're drinking and a lot of work but it's so important for especially young athletes to know guys testing is real out there and what you put in your body you have to know every single detail because you have to be sure you don't want to be that person to be caught and you had no idea you know what i mean it's really really important and i think it goes back to my next question about mentorship you spoke about your mentor and and you know how your mentor pushes you how important do you think it is for athletes to have access to mentorship and do you think it's important for us to have you know, mentors that's in the same industry or can it be anybody? I think mentors are very important and that's one thing we we um, do at EnduroCAD. Also, we, we make sure that each of our athletes have access to a mentor because we know the value of it. I mean, I can tell you all the things I've learned from Ilana and that has actually elevated my running to such a level, you know, that I achieved all of those results in 2018, these amazing results was, was because I had an amazing mentor in Ilana. So I definitely think that mentors are, are vital to the success of young athletes. Um, I think that they need the guidance. I mentor a lot of young girls and boys, and I know how they hang on my every word when we meet, and they like, wow, okay, is it? There's, there's a lot of things they still, they still don't know, and there's a lot of things that I can share from my side, the experiences I've learned, the lessons I've learned, that they, I can prevent them from making the same mistakes. So um, I think mentorship is vital for us, and I um, 
I don't think that it needs to be in the same industry. I think that we always encourage the athletes or um, the the girls to as well to go into the fields that they really want to. So so apart from sport, be a realistic person. So what do you still want to do apart from sport? So if it is that they want to be an en- entrepreneur, we'd find them a mentor that. is good with entrepreneur skills and they can they can learn from um so any field that that they wanting to go into it doesn't necessarily need to be sport if they want to be a um sport scientist or psychology then we would find them mentors in those fields yeah and i mean it's so important that what one thing i admire about you so much is that you extremely successful in your athletic career and your sporting career but then you're also successful off the track and off the field you recently launched um coaching with care which is your business that you own and also you work for endurocrat a lot of females young females don't want to pursue that athletic career because they're like how am i going to make money how am i going to have an, an, another career how am i going to be successful you know i'm going to earn nothing but you are a example of that you know someone who's successful both on and off the track and Just explain to us, you know, how you manage to achieve the success both on and off the track. Yeah, so so that is partly when I joined in Durocat, then they told me all of all of this about you can't run forever, you can't, you know, remain like you can't just put all your eggs into one basket. You have to like open up your horizons and look for other avenues. And um, you know, I've studied at UJ. I mean, you were there too. And I, uh, I made it a point to finish my degrees. And there, I finished um, my sports man, uh, sports management honors, and I did a post grad in education. And and I'm lucky that I have I've used my um, opportunities to gain my education, to gain free education. So mm-hmm. that already put me up there where I know, okay, I have a backup plan. It's not just my running, but I want to make sure that I have something that that I can fall back on because if I get injured. like now if i had to be injured for 2 years what would i do then so that's where that came in and i think that um it's really important and young people just um i always say it to them don't put your eggs into one basket make sure that you do something else find your passions in other things like because like i mentioned in covid times you've seen the athletes that went so live they just want to be athletes they were struggling to gain income because you know there were no races there were no sources of income so what do they do now you know yes. so i think that's really important and and what led me to coaching with k is that i wanted to um prepare myself i always said that i wanted to have my own business but that was going to be after my professional career and i think covid just brought that on early i said why not do it now you know i have the time i you know there are people that need help out there that need coaching and i'm available now i know i'm going to spread myself thinly because i am working at endurocad and i am still a professional athlete but at the time i was injured and i wasn't running so i that was the way for me to just start my own business and start it on a small scale and then grow it as i go on and then when i stop running one day then at least i've had build up a good um base for myself and i can i can work with that so important build up a good base and work with it and just have, don't have your eggs in one basket guys it's so so important but also you know give 100% in everything that you do and that's exactly what we have learned from Nolene whatever she does she gives 100% so what's next for Nola she's known as Nola guys that's Nolene that's my name for <laughs> what's next i just want to go back on that point and also just say athletes must learn to balance their things out because it can all become too much for me it was also like at a stage it became a bit too much but you need to have the right balance of yeah. work of running your own time and then you know if you have something else on the side um but yeah the balance is very important so what's next for me um i think for me uh, it would be training now obviously during covid and then um like i said my goal my main aim is to do well of the half marathon so i want to go sub 70 on the half marathon sure. um that is that is a massive goal and then hopefully to go to world champs for the marathon um next year in oregon that's amazing amazing and any more national titles that we can see on the track there i know you you've gone to the marathon side of things are you coming back I mean, Sam, no 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 <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to run a steeple chase anymore. I'm I'm tired. 
focus. I've retired. I've hanged up my spikes, and yeah, I'm all the ro- I'm on the road now. On that note, who has been the most interesting person that you've ever raced? Raced. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. How? Just like oh my gosh! Like I mean, when I went to Olympic Games and I and I had to run my my heats against Elaine Thompson, I was like. <laughs> yeah, like you know, like just, just someone that you've always watched, maybe someone that you, one that you've always admired, and all of a sudden now you're racing him. I think I think um, it, it would take me back sometime. It was um, I just posted something on um, my my previous experience with Renee Kalma when I was still a junior. You know, that was like a wow for me. Like I always loved and admired Renee, and that's so important. I think for young people to have role models because when I was 19 years old, I had these role models and people that I aspired to be like, and that's what motivated me. So every time I would stand on that line for a spa ladies race i would try and get close to renee and i would just see her as wow like i want to run with renee and i ran as fast as i can for the first kilometer and then i would blow but as long as i ran with her so that was that was very entertaining for me during that time but i also learned to listen to run a sensible race <laughs> from there on out <laughs> lessons that we always learning lessons in life yeah <laughs> and what was like your most your craziest experience on track i mean you've obviously had a long track career where they'd be on the road where they'd be you know people always ask me funny questions i'm a sprinter and one person asked me um how many times do you stop to use the bathroom <laughs> and i was like i run 100 meters guys where do i just stop to use the bathroom but i mean that is interesting question for someone who runs a marathon like how do you deal with all all those environmental factors while you're running a race I I think the before the race when the nerves all there then then you want to come and there's no toilet but <laughs> that is all just nerves I won't get into that but I I've never had to go on the route luckily um I've always been lucky where I know what nutrition to take before and to not let my stomach go but I've seen some crazy things on the road way <laughs> yeah. oh my gosh I mean it was crazy it was Never, I won't even finish if I have to. <laughs> no. <laughs> You're rather call it there. The race is done. It's over. Yeah, the race is done. But but another crazy thing about me also is that I always say that I, whatever race I get into, I never want to quit any race. So mm-hmm. I have a a nice clear sheet of. There's not a DNF next to my name, so I've always just ran. If it was in a marathon, and there was this one marathon that I was suffering in, Alyssa, I was probably I hit the wall at like 32 k's, which was early on in the marathon, mm. and the walk felt like the run felt like I was walking. So it was a struggle to get to the finish line, but I continued yeah. and I continued, and and that just shows the perseverance, you know. Yeah. And that for me, putting it into perspective with COVID. times now and it's i just like to also say to the young people i know it's very hard during this time and you feel like it's going on forever and when does it ever stop but you have to persevere and if you want to come out um and be successful at the end of the day there we go guys it's like that long marathon that no lean ran <laughs> that is exactly what you have to do you have <laughs> to tell yourself i'm not quitting hey <laughs> Yeah, you have to you will get to the finish line. Don't worry. Exactly. I think it's all about that have a goal. Your goal is that you never ever ever going to quit the race and you're always going to do yeah. your best in the same. If you guys are very young out there and you have a goal and your goal is to make the Olympic games, don't quit until you've made that. It's possible and and you're there for a reason and that is such wise words from Nolene. Thank you Nolene and I think that we need to constantly remind our youngsters about that i think i don't know if it's this crazy in in marathon but on track and field we don't really have young females you know participating and like you said that is the foundation that is the base where we need to have females to uh, groom them into marathon runners so i think that's very important for us as whether we retire athletes whether we still participating athletes to still mentor them and motivate them so really thank you for the amazing work you do with coaching with care and also at endure credit i know that you spend a lot of time with young athletes and we really appreciate everything you do on the track Thank for women in sport. Thank you. <laughs> we so we still have to challenge you. We still have to challenge you. So we have this game that we play on 
<laughs> I know you prepared. I know you want. I'm not prepared. prepared. I promise you. You know what? With timber, I we did it at the start, and I was prepared for that one. But I don't know what this game is. Trust it's me. It's all about. You know, it's all about the the, the finish line. You know what I mean? It's all okay. about that. You can't run the race um, or win the race just in that first few seconds. You have to go through the line. So now this is now. So we have the game that we play. I'm back, your girl. And it's all about naming as many female athletes, whether it be on track, whether it be on road. They just have to be female. And they have to be legit athletes. Okay, don't come give me your cousin's names here. And, and How are you going to know if it's legit? <laughs> I know. Girl, <laughs> I've been in this sport. I know athletes. <laughs> Okay, does it need to be name and surname or just name? Name and surname. Okay. Nolene Conrad. Who's Nolene? Nolene Conrad. Cherise Jones. <laughs> okay, so you have 30 seconds. Our record is 19. And I think when Danielle holds the record so far, Geraldine, ooh, please just, you have to be Geraldine. Geraldine gave me like five names in 30 seconds. Oh. So, yeah, for a sprinter. Ish. So show me what you can do. There's the clock. Are you ready? Okay. Serena Williams. Wait. Track and field. I thought it was Serena Williams. I only track and field. I think I thought she did. Okay, track and field or road. Okay. Okay, start over. Okay, let's go. Track and field, running, marathon, or or track. Ready? Three, two, one, and go. Ayana Almez, um, uh, sorry, on the sorry, Gerda Stein, her bed pansail, um, Des Linden, um, Shalane Flanagan, um, Naomi, Ke no, 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> Naomi Campbell, Alison Felix, um, um, <laughs> Wena Nell, um, Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's eight. Okay. Um, Yo, time. Lebu Kang Ampalula. I even gave you five extra seconds. No, Lee. I have nine. I have nine. I said Lebu Kang Palula. Okay, but who is Naomi Campbell? Who is Naomi Campbell? <laughs> She's a model. I'm going to count. So you have eight. But who is Naomi You know, you know when you're nervous and you just say things. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Lee, out of all the names... Can we start said, over, please? Okay, Can we start right. over? Serena Williams, I understand. Fine. She's Serena Williams. She's like the queen of sport in general. But Naomi Campbell. <laughs> but he's a, he's a sprinter. What's her name? Um, You know the Jamaican? Campbell? Campbell? But it, Veronica Campbell. Yes, yes. That's what I wanted to say. <laughs> Guys, I don't know if I should give Nolene then Naomi Campbell just for effort and for entertaining us. No, no, just you know what I meant. You know what I meant. <laughs> well, well done, Nolene. We'll give you nine. We'll give you nine. You beat Geraldine oh. at least. Let's put it that way. Five okay, minutes. at least I beat Geraldine. This yeah, but I, I was supposed to have more. You're supposed to have more. Okay, we have one more question, and this is from Sharice Jones, and she asks, what did you learn from running that you are using in your daily life and career? I think something that I'm very pedantic about is um, um, punctual, being punctual. <laughs> like if not I get on, some... Not on names. <laughs> I, <laughs> not on names. But, but I took it into my work life and I think um, on my personal life as well where, you know, if I'm always early for the meeting and if someone's late, I take them out. Like, mm. <laughs> it's just, I, I'm very pedantic about that. And that's something that um, I've learned from my running. If you late for a race, if you arrive there one minute later, then you miss the race, the gun goes over. Exactly. So, They're not going to wait for you. Not going to wait for you. Don't miss that gun. And, and that's, that's, that's powerful. Don't miss that gun. Don't miss that opportunity. Don't miss that, you know, once in a lifetime moment that could change your life forever and I think that is what we have learned from you Nolene. Thank you so much for chatting to us on Back Your Girl. It's been a pleasure and wishing you all the best for your future and your career endeavors and everything that you want to do for your business, for track, 
for road. We know you're going to see you back on track on that steeple chase. Don't worry, you just don't know it yet. <laughs> nah, nah okay. unless you get the 2000 steeple chase record, I'm done. <laughs> there we go. The record still stands, guys. Her record still stands. And I think her, her lifetime achievements will stand forever with us. We, we salute you, Noreen. Thank you for doing what you have done for female. Um, athletes on track, off of track, just females and women in sport in general. And thank you for the chat. I had lots of fun. Thank you, Alyssa. Thank you for having me. And thank you for everyone that tuned in. And I'll be back to take my record for this competition again. I'm, I'll be back. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll invite you back to redeem yourself because now we can. <laughs> Have a good evening. You too. Bye. Bye. That was Nolene Conrad, kind of guys. Great chat with her. She got so confused, she even started mentioning Naomi Campbell, who is a model. But anyway, we had so much fun with that, and we wish her all the best for the future. We'll be back in about 40 minutes, and we're going to be alive. 50 minutes. My math is really bad. Yeah, 50 minutes. And we're going to be speaking to Dominic Scott, who just qualified for the 2021 Tokyo Olympic Games. Don't miss it.